This is my third video and it's titled The End Times Challenged Church. If you go back to the very beginning of time, to the very beginning of the, the church, that is after Jesus came to earth and after he died and was risen again and went back to the right hand of the Father, the most sought after privilege in the church was to be that generation that was alive and well to see the return of Jesus Christ or the rapture. Sadly, the church of today is seriously rapture challenged and many times end times ignorant and just apathetical that they just don't really care what's going on. I used to go to a church a few years ago and they were advertising, it was a, a large church, they were advertising a revelation study about the end times and on the video screens they would have huge bombs exploding and all kinds of natural disasters and all kinds of end times sites that you would always see when you would imagine the end times and the, the music was loud and it was crashing and people were getting really fired up and I thought wow this is really cool you never see real end time stuff in church anymore and we got really hyped up for it and when the time came for the the series it was ridiculous they had very little going on the pastor basically said well some people believe in pre-tribulation rapture some mid-tribulation rapture and some post-tribulation rapture and um you know he never specified what he believed in he never went any further than that he would say things like well you know the rapture could be 50 years down the road 100 years down the road and that was the gist of the whole series it was all vague it was all just so much left to chance there was very little said it was just really sad it was pathetic and i thought man you know i shouldn't have expected any more than that because the church nowadays that's how they teach they don't really care about talking about end times events and and exactly where we're at you have to be blind you have to be spiritually blind to look around today see what's going on and have no clue as to how close we are to the return of Jesus Christ let's look back to last year to uh, January 1st of 2011 November of 2010 the Holy Spirit gave me a word. I was praying, interceding for America, which I now call Sin Erica because of, of, it, of our sin-ridden state. And I was interceding and asking for forgiveness and apologizing, and the Holy Spirit just told me to stop and listen. So I stopped and listened, and he told me that God was getting ready to remove his hand of protection upon us and replace it with his hand of judgment. And the reasons why he was going to do this is rampant homosexuality and perversions of all kinds uh, the fact that we have turned on israel the fact that we're our churches have turned into dens of satan of aborting killing 51 million plus babies that we know of who knows how many have been murdered in you know back alley abortions or backroom abortions and just went on and on with all of the terrible things that are going on we're the pornography capital of the world per capita we are one of the biggest uh, child molesting and child prostitution countries in the world per capita and just all the terrible things. We were a nation that was founded on God and Jesus Christ and look what we've become and God is just tired of it. And so I told everyone that I could and sure enough, you know, God's word never returns empty. Starting on the 1st of January of 2011, all these things started happening, all these um really un weird anomalies all the birds started falling out of the sky on new year's eve in the middle of the night and all the fish started washing up on the shores and all the dead crabs and the dead cattle and the dead buffalo and all the dead livestock everywhere more birds of other kinds started crashing and all kinds of animals uh started just dying off you know fulfilling biblical prophecy and next thing you know we start having all these terrible weather anomalies we're having fires everywhere floods everywhere really hot turning really cold all the bad hurricanes the bad tornadoes the volcanoes all of the of those type of natural disasters of flooding that of just epic proportions that people had never seen before in their lives and next you come up to 
the point where we start having all the financial crashes and people are losing money and banks are closing and, and mortgages of homes are just going crazy and, 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 and people just can't stay in their homes and they can't take care of all of their things they have to take care of and things just start going really wild and all the politicians start getting into more evil and lies and more junk and the whole world just starts going crazy. It, it just, and everything just keeps compounding and compounding and compounding, getting more and more and worse and worse. And then we get to the Middle East. You know, they call it the, you know, all of their different, different uh, revolutions and all their, of their different, you know, trying to get free of their dictators and trying to get free of this and that. And everything started getting crazy and everybody started really hating Israel. And it all started focusing around Israel and all of Israel's neighbors start teaming up and Hamas and Hezbollah and Lebanon and all of these different countries just start lining up. You know, Iran is lining up with with Syria and China is, is backing is backing Iran and all these countries are just Russia is backing these countries and North Korea is getting involved and all of these end times bullies are just it's all coming together. The prophecy is being fulfilled left and right and yet people still can't see. They still can't understand what's going on. You know, the scientists try to say it's La Nina or El Nino and all this kind of thing. It's Mother Nature. It's not Mother Nature. It's Father God. God is behind all of this. And if you look at all the animal deaths, the really strange thing is when you have millions of fish washing up on the shore or tens of thousands of birds falling out of the sky, it's not just a random bunch of fish or a bunch of birds. It's the exact same species every single time. What are the odds that there wouldn't be at least one different kind of bird that washes up or one different kind of fish that washes up? They're astronomical. God's just showing us there's no way in the world it's anything but him. And now, flash forward, forward to 2012, on the very first day, again, New Year's Eve, in Little Rock, Arkansas, the exact same place, tens of thousands of blackbirds fall from the sky once again. And the last year, scientists tried to say that it was um, fireworks that scared them and it might have been some thunder and lightning crashes, but it's been proven these birds don't fly at night. They roost and they're sleeping. And so this year, they made sure that they stopped the fireworks and they made sure they kept things more quiet, but they still fell from the sky. So what's their excuse going to be this time? What are they going to say that caused it? The bottom line is, it's the hand of God. 100% unequivocal, zero doubt, zero debate, nothing. It's the hand of God. He's trying to show the church exactly where we are. But again, the church won't wake up. I've talked to many friends that I used to have in the church, many Christian friends that I don't have anymore because um, they don't like the fact that I'm a Bible thumper, they're not comfortable being around me. All I talk about is Jesus. I want to talk about Christ about the end times, the tribulation, about the rapture, they don't really want to hear that. And I would tell them things that, that I had seen, you know, a vision or a dream the Lord had given me or word the Holy Spirit had given me, and they'd say, oh yeah, thanks Paul, uh, thanks a lot for sharing that brother, you know, you just keep working for the Lord and you just keep pushing forward and, and, and obey the Holy Spirit and I'm really glad to hear that, um, that you're hearing these things and thanks for sharing, you know, just patronizing me. And they just don't, they don't understand. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the truth. I've had people tell me that they're afraid to talk about end times because they're afraid of things. And it's what I call the ostrich syndrome. You know, they have their heads buried in the sand. They don't care what's going on. They don't want to hear what's going on. They want to just sit there with their head buried in the sand and just say, well, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. But the Bible tells us that Jesus wants us to be looking for his return. God does not want us to be surprised. No one knows the day or the hour of the return of Jesus but the Father God. And this guy, Harold Camping, did more damage to the rapture than anyone probably in the history of the world. This guy was a big time clown who just perverted the Bible. It's uh, made the Bible out to be a lie when he guaranteed that the Bible said the rapture would happen on this day and this hour. And once again, it's just all fulfilling prophecy because in the end times, people are going to be going to and fro. They're going to be married and given to marriage. They're going to be having parties and celebrations, doing what they do. And all of a sudden, boom, Jesus is going to return. And very few are going to be ready. People just are, the apathy is just horrible. They don't want to hear about it. 
And now with the hero camping thing, it's a big mockery. People laugh at the rapture. And I go all over the internet and tell people about the rapture and they laugh at me and say I'm a clown and say I'm stupid and say I'm like hero camping. And I try to explain to them, what if you had a family member who was crazy? I mean, he was just a, a really bad person. Maybe he was evil. Maybe he was a, a, a terrible murderer. And would someone blame the entire family? Would they judge the entire family and say, well, you're a family of lunatics or a family of murderers because of so-and-so? No, they wouldn't. It's the same way in the family of God. There's people who are heretics, blasphemers, liars, false prophets. You can't judge us all by one person. And his reward is waiting for him. That's between him and God what he's done. He needs to repent and turn back to God and ask for forgiveness. But we need to be focused on what's going on, focused on the imminent rapture that's going to happen any second of any day now. Everything that needs to happen for the rapture to occur has happened. We're just waiting for God to give Jesus the word and say, son, go get him. It's time to bring him home. And Israel is the key right now. The Psalm 83 war is imminent. It can happen any second of any day. And the rapture is tied right around that time frame of Psalm 83, right before or right after. And all of the signs are there, the signs of Syria getting ready to be collapsed and turned into rubble, they're all there. The bottom line, my friends, is we need to make a conscious choice or decision. If you are a Christian and you're backslidden, you're living in sin, iniquity, unrepented sin, and you believe the lies of once saved, always saved that are just permeating our church like a, a filthy disease, like a virus, then, my friends, when Jesus Christ returns for the rapture, you're not going anywhere. Your feet will be like lead stuck on the ground. You'll be screaming, wait, Jesus, come back. Come back and get me. I'm a Christian too. But the bottom line is, the Bible says over and over and over and over again that if you don't repent of known sins and iniquities in your life, you can't step foot in heaven. God, a holy God, a holy Jesus can't have sin around them. So you need to repent, first of all, if you're a backslidden Christian. And read your Bible. Don't listen to what people tell you. Read your Bible. And it proves it hundreds of times through your Bible shows this. And one time I'm going to do a message with a link that I have, and I'll share it with you so you can actually go and look this up yourself. If you've never been saved, never known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's no better time than today. Just pray this prayer. Just say, Jesus, I know that I've sinned. I know that I've come short of your glory. I know that I've messed up my life, and I'm really sorry. I believe that you came to earth, and you died for my sins, and were risen again, and returned to heaven to the right hand of the Father. And I pray that you would come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, clean up my life, and just be my Lord and Savior. And if you pray that prayer, then he'll do it. He says, all that come to me will be saved. It's very, very important. We have to focus on being ready because, again, he can and will return any moment of any day. It's not a matter of, of being way down the road. It's coming soon, and everybody needs to be ready. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you so much today, and we just thank you for this wonderful media where we can just go online and share in video a message with our brothers and sisters who are saved, also those who are backslidden and those who are unsaved. I pray that you would just pierce the hearts of those that need to know you as Lord and Savior. I pray that you would just convict their hearts, soften their hearts, and those that need to repent of sins and iniquity, do the same for them. I pray that you would just place people in their lives who would witness to them and be an example to them. And I pray that people would just understand the gravity, understand the urgency of where we are in time right now and see that the rapture is right around the corner. Regardless of what the church teaches, that doesn't, it, that, that's irrelevant. What's relevant is we know in our hearts, we know in the Holy Word by what prophecy shows, by what's happening in the world, that the rapture could happen any second of any day now. And we don't want to be left behind. No one wants to be left behind and stuck in the Great Tribulation with seven years of hell where you basically will have to be tortured and have your head chopped off to be able to get to heaven on the second run. Now's the time to do it. Now's the time to make that decision to get right with Jesus because no one's guaranteed even the next second of their life. The life is like a, a mist. It's here and then it's gone. Just help people's hearts to be touched, to be moved, 
and help people to witness to others and tell them uh, the good news of Jesus Christ so we can all just lead as many to the cross as we can. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Thank you, my friends. May God bless you.